It is necessary to talk through the moments for setting up static coils at the request of many people. In principle, the initial stage is practically no different from what we did before with the capacitive coil. That is, we first make a coil, here it is wound on plywood. Now we can measure its frequency. It is wound around 182 kHz. The wire is approximately 0.4. That is, I will connect the two outputs. Look at the diagram. We must create a closed, in, closed inductive sequence. That is, we have one choice. Here we have two. That is, we must connect these two outputs inside. Let's say before that we had a frequency of 182 obtained due to the fact that we cannot absolutely perfectly wind the coil. After joining here, such frequency will drop a little. The coil without oscilloscopes cannot be precisely tuned. This is not to say that we take such a cable and such a wire diameter and such a length in meters, wrap it all around and get a coil, because it doesn't work out that way. With the previous capacitive coil we could do something like this. If you look at the figure, then we have such a slope of resonance, and the second part is more sloping. With these settings it goes differently and does such a peak here, and we must, must get into it with maximum accuracy. The entire range is about 5 kHz, so that is that it more or less works. But the peak itself in the region on 1 kHz is adjusted, that is, its width is 1 or maximum 2 kHz. It turns out that the better the coil is wound, the sharper the peak it produces. And often, through non-ideal winding, a frequency shift occurs and only with an oscilloscope you determine the exact frequency. How does the process go? Here we make the coil, immediately we can use like this one, for example, with tape on top to protect it from moisture. We mount any connector directly on it and connect the wire. That's it, it's connected. How to check it? We connect this point to the generator. This is a phase wire. That is, we connect the phase wire. We take some kind of inductance, and here we have an oscilloscope. This is my inductance, a coil with about 40 turns of a millimeter wire, 84 microhenry. It is possible to use less, 20 or 30 turns. This will be enough. So, when we measure, we put one coil on another. On my peak indicator coil, it produces 2.7 volts. If I retreat 1 kHz to this side, then there will already be 2.2, another kHz, and there will be about 1.7. That is 3 kHz, and we have already lost 60% efficiency. The same thing up there, 2.4, 1.8. We have a very clear slide. In the previous version of the coil, we had fluctuations of about 10 kHz and everything was fine. This will not work here. The fact is that we use uh, the viscosity of the medium and we need to get into this viscosity, otherwise we will not have adhesion to the medium. It's like with pendulums. If we don't get into the right frequency, the whole system goes astray. Here it is about the same, that is, it is desirable to set everything up in the region of 1, of one kHz. And so we have made a flat coil, sealed it and determined its frequency. After we sealed it, the length of this wire does not affect its frequency, but this length will affect the applied voltage. We check different options. The length of 1.5 or 2 meters is very convenient. I use 1.5 meter myself. It's very comfortable lens for me. Next, we make a bagel. The bagel must be adjusted to the frequency of the coil. We take about 22 cm of corrugation from the outside 32, inside 25, and insert the 25th polypropylene into it. We crush the corrugation a little bit to make it more flexible and put it in a ring and to get a right great foundation. The amount of wire depends on the desired frequency. For frequencies around 300 kHz you need 22-25 meters twisted pair wires. Here's an example of my bagel. 
There are three standing bifilar, which together with the varnish dangled wire 0.4 have frequency of 266 kHz. Very laborious work, not worth it. It's easier to take a twisted pair cable. The only thing is that the dimensions are smaller. A little. One double wire goes to power to the generator, the second comes out from there. For example, here is another red bagel I took out to fit two wires here. One with a connector, in the other connector there is no direct sense. So we wind the bagel and check its frequency. This can be done just like with a flat coil. We put it on the indicator coil, if there is an oscilloscope. The twisted pair diameter is approximately 0.5. Why corrugation and not something else? I tried to use another material, it produces unnecessary noise, and the corrugation collects all of this interference into a ring, the natural environment. There is also an option with a ferrite ring for the generator. Regarding the power you need, here is the simplest indicator about 30, uh, 30 turns with two LEDs. If I bring the indicator to a 100 or 120 milliamp coil, the indicator starts to glow. If you make more power, the indicator will glow brighter. But for people with serious problems, more power is not needed. It will be a very strong impact on them. It is better to limit ourselves to currents through our bagel. That is, a bagel is a vortex voltage convector. The circuit itself is very simple. We have an input voltage here, and here we have an output voltage that we apply to this system. Here we spend current to get more energy. In our operating range of 300-350 kHz, the number of turns of the maximum varies 1 to 2, from maximum to minimum. It turns out that the total, from minimum to maximum, it turns out that the total current that we pass through this vortex transformer from 50 to 150 milliamps and above is not necessary. If it is higher, then problems may begin. A healthy body will not feel anything and should not feel anything, or it cannot immediately feel it. Capacity technology influences ring objects with low electrical resistance, and a static coil affects objects with high electrical resistance. That is, if the vortex objects, object has high resistance and we cannot uh, induce ring currents in sufficient strength to destroy it. The, the object has great resistance to electrostatics and in response we use only electrostatics in order to create mechanical vibrations, because the object clings to mechanical things. That is, a capacitive coil is ring currents and it creates seals inside the ring object so that it breaks itself from the inside. But a static coil has the following effect. If you take a flat rubber band, if you blow it, at some point it will begin to enter into resonance. Moreover, the frequency with which we blow, of course, does not coincide, there is simply an external flow. This is the technology of a flat static coil. Those diseases that have an annual closed structure and have a large electrical resistance for the ring current will be subject to mechanical vibrations of the static coil. For example, what was good with capacitive coils is the following. When problems with muscles are dealt with, some insists a lot or muscles are numb and we use a capacitive coil, after 5 minutes the muscles will begin to twitch because ring currents work and there is a direct effect, effect of the coil on the muscle. A purely electrostatic coil does not cause such effects. Some people are treated only with a bagel. The composition of the bagel, if you look in the context, uh, it turns out like this. The flow moves along the ring in one direction and Absorption occurs like this and the monopole effect is obtained. But I cannot say whether it is good or bad to treat diseases with a bagel. I just don't have an answer, so I would not recommend. It is interesting that devices in contact with the coil stop working, like keyboards, laptops, etc. I checked. My touchpad stopped working and did not work until I turned off the coil. 
Please note that the coil is a Tesla coil. It is flat like a capacitor one. Well, everything is simple, but determining the frequency is a little complicated. Still, there were questions like I made the coil and nothing works, what kind of frequency do I use? The answer is Bagel 285, flat coil 300. It, would, it should also be said that what you feel after applying a static coil is different from what you feel with a capacitive coil. After applying a capacitive coil, people feel a surge of strength. After a static coil, the opposite is true. After the first two sessions, there may be a feeling that there is no strength at all. This is because a mechanism has been launched to deal with the problems uh, that were in the body. And the body is so tired because it spends its, 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 spends its strength. Drowsiness and fatigue can usually last a day or two. In general, the coil is very softly felt. More power is not needed, otherwise it will pressure on the head and it will be unpleasant. According to the frequency of use, 30 minutes every other day, because the body needs time to deal with bacteria that are in the body. It means that the body begins to react, fight with them and gets tired. You should understand that the effect of the coil is such as the effect of the vaccination. Well, that's all. Actually, I have showed everything.